Now this is a fascinating integral and we're going to solve it using Feynman's technique, also known as Leibniz's integral rule or differentiation under the integral sign. So yeah, call it whatever you want. That's the technique that we're going to use to solve this interesting problem. Now before actually applying the technique, I would like to make use of a substitution that will make our lives a lot easier. So I'm going to let x equal e to the negative t, which implies that dx equals the negative of e to the negative t dt. So this introduces a factor of e to the negative t and this will come in handy later and as well as come in handy soon. So give me a few moments. Now if you look at this equation here, this will imply that the natural log of x equals negative t. So how does this affect the uh, limits of integration as well? So as x approaches 0, if you look at the graph of the uh, natural log of x function, then we see as x approaches 0, the natural log of x approaches negative infinity. So the natural log of x here is negative t. So if negative t approaches negative infinity, t should approach positive infinity. So that is going to turn into your lower limit of integration. And if you check out the upper limit, as x approaches 1, we see that the natural log of x approaches 0, which implies that t approaches 0 as well. So that's your upper limit. And I know this looks really, really weird, but hang on. Uh, it'll get better once I switch up the limits of integration. So that means your integral, call it i. So i equals the integral from positive infinity to zero of the sine of, now the natural log of x is converted into a negative t, and in the denominator you had another natural log of x, which is now negative t, and the differential element was turned into e to the negative t, oh, a negative sign here as well, times dt, and let me just make that negative sign a bit more visible. So there you go. So now we have to clean up the mess and make this integral look much better. So the sine of x uh, or the sine of t is an odd function. So if you have a negative sign in here, that translates to a negative sign out here. So the two negatives upstairs and downstairs cancel out. So just erase them. And this negative sign can be shifted outside. Now, if you switch up the limits of integration, that will add another negative sign and fix the negative sign outside. So you're now, uh, you now have the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative t times the sine of t divided by t with respect to t. Notice that we have this damping factor e to the negative t, which removes our concerns about convergence. So now we can just go ahead and define our integral function i of a, where a is some parameter that I have to decide where to place in the integral. Now, this is quite similar to the uh, case with the Dirichlet integral. So I'm going to place the parameter a up here as part of the argument of the exponential function. And now finally, we can differentiate with respect to the parameter a. So on the right hand side, we can switch up the um, integration and differentiation operators. And we now have the integral from zero to infinity. And the total derivative will be converted into a partial derivative with respect to a. So we're differentiating partially with respect to a, e to the negative a t times sine of t divided by t. And of course, we're integrating with respect to t as well. So Differentiating partially with respect to a means that the t variable and uh, all functions of t are a constant, right? All functions purely of t are constants. So this sine of t by t term is a constant multiple, and we now have to differentiate e to the negative a t, which will give us e to the negative a t times the derivative of the uh, argument as per the quotient rule, which will be a negative t factor. So this is quite handy because it gets rid of that pesky uh, t in the denominator. And we're left with the uh, negative of the integral 
from 0 to infinity of e to the negative a t times sine of t with respect to t. So now you have an expression for the derivative of i with respect to a that you can uh, solve pretty easily using integration by parts or uh, complex analysis. So we're integrating in the t world, so the a is now just a constant, and the results of integration by integration by parts or complex analysis will be e to the negative a t divided by 1 plus a squared times uh, the cosine of t plus a times the sine of t. And the limits of integration were, of course, from 0 to positive infinity. So plugging in the uh, upper and lower limits, as t approaches infinity, this exponential term will approach 0. So you have a 0 minus the results of plugging in the lower limit. And once uh, and when t approaches 0, then e to the negative a t is going to approach 1 anyway. So you have 1 by 1 plus a squared. The cosine of 0 is just 1, and uh, the sine of 0 vanishes, right? So that means, or this implies that i prime of a is going to be the negative of 1 by 1 plus a squared. So now you finally have an expression for the derivative of i with respect to a completely in terms of a. So now I want to get back my integral function i. And how do you get back a function given its derivative? Well, obviously, you have to integrate. So integrating with respect to a, on the right hand side I'm going to have the negative of the integral of 1 by 1 plus a squared with respect to a. Now those of you who have watched my previous video, watched my previous videos on Feynman integration, you know that at this stage I like to use definite integrals. So for that I'm going to retrace my steps a bit and remember that what I was looking for was the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative t sine of t divided by t with respect to t, which is just a case of the integral function i of a with, I, with a equal to 1. So a equals 1 is one limit of integration. And for the other limit, I'm going to make use of the uh, properties of this damping factor. So the integral function i of a was the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative a t times sine of t divided by t with respect to t. So as a approaches positive infinity, e to the negative a t is going to approach 0. And sine of t is a bounded function, and down here we just have a uh, linear term, a linear polynomial in t. And we know that exponentials outrun polynomials when it comes to matters of growth and decay. So all of this is going to approach 0, which implies that the limit of i of a as a approaches positive infinity is zero. So now that I have that information, it will be a good time for you to like and subscribe. Anyway, the lower limit of integration is one and the upper limit is infinity. So the left hand side by the fundamental theorem of calculus gives me i of infinity, which is just zero, so cross it out or ignore it, minus i of 1, and the right-hand side is just the inverse tangent of a, right? So I finally have this equation where the negative of i of 1 equals the negative of the inverse tangent or arc tangent a, and the limits of integration were 1 and positive infinity. So the negatives cancel out, and I'm left with i of 1 equals the upper limit gives me pi by 2, and the lower limit gives me pi by 4, which implies that i of 1 equals pi by 4. There you have it. That's the answer. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you. See you next time.